Hi everyone, today we want to start off by taking a look at James 1 verse 22. It says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So today we want to talk about five famous Christian quotes and how we can apply them practically so that we aren't just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So the first Christian quote that we want to take a look at is put God first. Now this is a Christian quote that we hear so often, but how can we practically apply it into our lives? Well, the first way that we can apply it into our lives is by being in constant conversation with God. We shouldn't just end our day and start our day with God. We should be with God throughout our day. We should be in constant communication with God. We should be in constant fellowship with God. If we're not thinking, how is God doing this with me, then we're doing life wrong. We should be doing life with God every step of the way. Many people say that we should just start our mornings off with prayer and then we should conclude our day with prayer. But the Bible says that we should pray without ceasing. This means that we should go with God throughout our day. God should be a big part of our day-to-day -day lives. Now what is important for us to remember is our thoughts, what we think control our lives that's why it's so important for us to meditate on god's word as we go throughout our day we must think about god think about what we can do to glorify him but oftentimes the devil will attack our thoughts but what is important for us to remember is not that when we have these thoughts that we that we get these thoughts we must not focus on them you see we must focus on god the sin is not getting these thoughts getting attacked by the devil the sin is holding on to them and then focusing on them and then eventually doing what the devil says now this can be when the devil attacks you by telling you wow this situation is getting too much you must be anxious why aren't you stressing over it because the bible says that we must trust God. So don't listen to the devil. When the devil tries to attack you with your thoughts, instead focus on God instead of what the devil is trying to attack you with. Now the devil also attacks us by tempting us. Now when we are tempted and when we fall into that temptation, we are not putting God first. We have decided to put the temptation above God. So we want to give you ways in which you can overcome temptation. Firstly, we must be like Joseph when he was tempted by Potiphar's wife. When he was tempted by Potiphar's wife, he decided to flee from the temptation. He ran away as quickly as he could. We should do the same. We should run away. We should flee from the temptation. And now the Bible tells us to where we should run. We should run to the word of God. We should spend time with God. We should be with God. We should be in fellowship with God. Because if we are with God, then He will give us the strength to overcome the temptation. And lastly, we should also be like Jesus. When He was tempted by the devil, He said, It is written. So it is important for us to understand that we should know the Word of God. We should dwell in the Word of God. We should also have some quotes and biblical verses that we can quote against the devil. So when we are tempted, we can overcome the temptation by knowing the Word of God. So when it comes to putting God first, it's important for us to remember that we need to love God above anything else now a while ago we recorded a short sermon about where we talked about this so we will be playing that message to you right now and it's about one minute and 20 seconds long so if you have seen it you can just skip this part matthew 22 verse 37 says that we must love god with our whole heart soul and mind now how do we do this so the bible says that our desires come from our hearts now what this means is that god should be our number one desire in order for us to love god with all our heart we should put him as our heart's first desire now how do we love god with our entire soul well the bible says that our soul yearns for the fulfillment of god nothing else can fulfill you other than god nothing of this world can fulfill you not all the money sex cars fame fortune anything of this world no porn nothing can fulfill you other than god now how do we make god our first priority when it comes to our mind how do we love god with our whole mind well we use our mind for two things number one to think and number two to make decisions so as we go throughout our day we must think about god we must think about god's word we must meditate on his word and then when it comes to the decisions that we make through our day-to-day -day lives we must think how can this decision be used to glorify god god must be the first thing that comes in our mind and that's how we can know that we love god with our whole mind so today i want to encourage you think about your life 
think about what you are prioritizing and loving over God. Now the second famous quote that we want to look at is faith over fear or trust God. Now these are powerful words, but these powerful words mean nothing to us if we don't know how to apply them. Now faith isn't thinking about how big the enemy is. Faith is about knowing how big God is. And that's why it's so important for us to spend time in the Word of God. Because the Word of God tells us how big and powerful God is. The Bible says that God is so big and so powerful that He can make a way for you where there seems to be no way. The Bible says that God is so big and powerful that He can slay any giant in front of you. The Bible says that God is so big and powerful that He gives you salvation. That's how big and powerful God is. And if we spend time with God, if we dwell on His Word, then we will know this. We will know how big and how powerful God is. You see, faith is a choice and every single day when we wake up we must choose faith 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 you see we must have faith in god and every single time when we get stressed or anxious we are limiting god we are not putting faith in god that he can put that he can get us through this difficult time that he can get us through this situation so when you find yourself being stressed or being anxious tell god god i put my trust in you god today i choose faith i know how big god is and i know how small my problem is when it comes to you you can conquer any giant that stands in my way now the third famous quote that we want to look at is god is the answer now in math when you have a problem you try to solve the problem by looking at the answer and the bible tells us that god is the answer so when we have a problem it doesn't matter what the problem is we know that god is the answer god shouldn't be our last resort he should be our first option whenever we are going through something we don't have to try to solve the problem because we already know what the answer is we already know that god is the answer to this problem we should be turning to god in everything that we do in every situation that we are facing we should always turn to god and that's what this means this means that we know that we might go through a difficult time we know that we have these problems around us but we're not going to try to solve it by ourselves because we know that god is the answer now the fourth quote that I think is so popular, especially if you're on social media, you might have seen this a lot, and that is disciple or follower of Christ. Now a lot of people put this in their bio, but do they actually know what it means? Because the Bible says that when we are a follower of Jesus Christ, that we will have to sacrifice some things. We will have to sacrifice the sinful things of this world, and we will have to deny ourselves and take up our crosses not just monthly, not yearly, but daily. Every single day, we must make the decision to live for God and to glorify God. You see, as a follower of Christ, we must live in Jesus Christ's example for our lives. We must live a life where we try to please God. We must answer the calling of God in our lives. Where we must spread the gospel. Where we must make disciples of people. We need to honor and glorify God every single day. And that's what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Even if that means that we will be hated by this world, we must still follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said that He has called us to be disciples. We must be disciples for people. Just like Jesus called us to be disciples, we must now disciple other people. We must call other people to Christ. And that is the purpose and the calling on every Christian's life. We shouldn't just focus on the personal aspect of our life or the personal aspect of our faith. Yes, that is important. We spend time with God. We pray and read our Bibles. We grow in our relationship with God. But from there, we should also practice our calling. We should go out into this world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and make disciples of nations. Now the final famous quote that we want to take a look at is no God, no peace. Now this means that when we know who God is, we know who peace is because God is peace and God gives us peace. But when we don't know God, we also don't know peace. We will have no peace within us because God gives us peace. Whenever we are anxious, worried or depressed, this should be a warning sign. You know when someone breaks into your house and you have an alarm and the alarm goes off, this is a warning that there is a thief inside your house. Now when you have when you have anxiousness or when you are stressed, this should be a warning sign for us that it's time to turn to God. It's time to work on your relationship with Him because God is always there for you. And when you are within Him, when you abide within Him, then He will give you peace. So whenever you're feeling anxious, worried, stressed, depressed, you should know that you can turn to God. You should give that things that are making you feel this way to God because when you do, He will give His peace to you in return. Philippians 4 verse 6 through 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything. 
but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, why does this passage say, say, oh, which transcends? Okay. Philippians 4 verse 6 through to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. You see, this passage tells us that we will have the peace of God which transcends all understanding. You see, when our situation screams that we should have fear, when our situation screams that we should be anxious, when our situation screams that we should be stressed, we will have the peace of God, which a lot of people won't be able to understand because our situation screams the complete opposite of what our lives show. We want to conclude this sermon by looking at the words of Andrew Murray. He said, God has no more precious gift to a church or an age than a man who lives as an embodiment of his will and inspires those around him with the faith of what grace can do. Now today, we want to remind you to not only be hearers of the word, but doers of God's word. I hope you all have a blessed week and may God bless all of you.